Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and today's guests are sure to knock your socks off. Our first guest runs a live cooking show right in her own kitchen. Leslie Nance is the creator of GoToKitchens.com, a resource offering recipes and support for people who want to live the anti-cancer lifestyle. Leslie, so great to have you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I really want to understand what is the anti-cancer lifestyle and how can people start making that transition? That's a great question because I think most people think that because I'm a kitchen coach and I teach yeah. people how to be in the kitchen, that it has to do with all food, right? Like right. you just eat well and you're never going to get cancer. But it's so much more than that. It's a mind-body connection. It's an emotional connection. It's a passion and a drive for life. What drives you? What makes you passionate? Yeah. All wrapped up into a nice little package with a food bow on top. Yes. <laughs> and the food is the draw. I mean, for, it is. <laughs> for real, I watch you because I like to, you know, figure out how to cook stuff. Right. I know. It's uh, probably why most people like to watch me. So yeah. then I suck them in. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yes, you don't know you're eating. Life. Yeah. You don't know you're eating healthy, but you are. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're, all of this was started by a, a transition that you went through um, and some things that you kind of learned about your own personal health. So tell us a little bit about that journey and how you kind of came into all of this. So uh, in 2012, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and it took me by surprise. I mean, I thought I was doing everything right. I was, I thought I was healthy. Um, I thought I was living a dream life. Honestly, I had everything. My husband and I owned a small business and we were, we had beat a recession mm -hmm. and we were doing really well. We were traveling the world. We were doing all the things that we always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I got a cancer diagnosis. And it rocked my world, like it does most people. I mean, let's be honest, most people aren't like, I have cancer. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm not, that's not unique to me. But, um, but it really rocked my world. And so um, I spent about two months being a basket case. After the cancer diagnosis, I was crazy. I was running around. I didn't know what to do or how to uh, accomplish what my mind was telling me to do. And so I needed answers. And so I started searching out answers. And the first thing I found was food. The yeah. first connection I made to healing my body was to food. And so I had to learn how to eat. I had to learn how to respect the food that I was eating and what I was putting into my body. And, um, and that, that started a whole life change for me. And I will tell you people that knew me prior to 2012 and maybe haven't seen me in a long time, mm -hmm. they are, what's happened to you? What's going on? What's, what's the change? What have you done differently? Did you change your hair? Have you, you know, you're just smiling all the time. Aww. And, and it, it was a, it was a big, it was a big flip switch for me. I mean, I, that, that switch really got a big flip and, and it was, a, it was actually the best thing that's ever happened to me, honestly. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of cancer survivors find that empowerment that it can be the best thing that ever happened to you if you let it. So, and and I let it I let it take hold of me that way. So yeah, it sounds like you made it become a lesson for you, and you mm -hmm. you let it empower you to become something for others as well. Absolutely, and that didn't come till much later. Um, about a year after my cancer diagnosis, I began to really figure out that there was a different way to live, and I was living it, and and I could feel a change. And again, I'll go back. People were seeing a change in me, and because of that, they wanted to know what are you, what's going on, what are you doing, and they wanted a piece of the pie, you know. How do I get in on what you're doing? Because you're supposed to have cancer. You're supposed to be sick, right? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I know, and I'm not. I mean, it was just, it was, it was phenomenal and exciting. And so, about two years into my journey, um, I began to teach family and friends how to cook, oh. how to be different. Um, and I made a video one day, and it was all over. Go to yeah. Kitchens was born. You were hooked. I was hooked. Yeah, <laughs> I was hooked on making other people as passionate about their bodies as I was about mine. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you've built a really engaged community. I mean, when you yeah. post something, people are responding to it. Mm -hmm. They're watching on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So how did you really build a community of people that are so involved with what you're putting together? Just, I mean, I honestly, it's just, I think it is that, just that drive to walk the walk, 
that I'm talking. You know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna talk about it all the time, typically when you meet me in person, it's the same person you get on camera. Everybody's like, hey, you're just like you are, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe with a little eyeliner. But <laughs> but it's it's I'm the you know it's the same I'm the same person that you meet, and I think that they are people are looking for that like best friend. You know, they are looking for the person that they can relate to. Yes. So they're going through an icky time in their life. And then they find somebody like me and that has a little light to shine on them, mm -hmm. has some extra light to shine on them, and they gravitate towards that light. And so I have a, I have a mantra that is always let me be light into darkness and never darkness into light spaces. Uh, and so I think because of that, it, it, it draws people into that. People want to move towards that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're just amazing people that love and share with one another in a way that I could have never anticipated or expected, but I'm so grateful for. Yeah, and in your community, I feel like people are kind of supporting each other in the process as well. Yeah, they are, and yeah. it's beautiful to watch them as they learn and grow. They begin to also teach the principles that I'm teaching them. They begin to teach those to yeah. each other and to the new people that are coming in. And then they stick, and they're like, all oh, these people love me, and they want to stay here, you know, and they want to, they want to be a part of that. And it's, it's been an amazing journey. That community is just, it really, GoTo Kitchens is not a thing or a website or a place. It's a community. I mean, it's a community of people. So hence, GoTo Kitchens. Yes. <laughs> so what's the one thing that you really want for the people that are watching your show? What's mm -hmm. your, biggest, um, your biggest wish for them to take away from being involved in the community that you build? Yeah, so I think it is so important to realize the power that is in each one of us. I mean, to get up and get up in the morning and to get ready and to even eat breakfast or even open your eyes takes some form of energy. And when we harness that energy in a positive way, not in a negative way, but in a positive way, our bodies are healing machines. And so I like to think about food and spirituality and self-care as that energy that drives you to your next point. Mm -hmm. So using that positive energy of taking care of ourselves, of eating good information. I mean, oh, food is information, like right? <laughs> and so if you give if you give your body bad information, it's going to process bad information out, yeah. right? So if we give our body good information, then it's going to process good information back out. But right. that's not just in not getting cancer. Mm -hmm. That is also in our interactions with one another, yeah. how we perceive the world, how we go about our day. All of that is the anti-cancer lifestyle. I love that. Yeah, that is, that is really the anti-cancer lifestyle. Food is just the... Food is just the icing on the cake that we get to eat all these, you know, scrumptious, amazing things and live in our kitchens and be be one with our kitchen and understand that it's not just a workspace, but it is a space to heal ourselves. And so it's our command center, really. I mean, it all starts with that. So so that's really the big takeaway is just yeah. loving yourself so much that you that you just you have to take care of yourself. Like, there's no options. So empowering. Yeah. Yeah. It is empowering. I agree. <laughs> So is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we go? Uh, just uh, really just having that that clarity. I actually counsel people. Um, I am a holistic cancer coach. I'm a certified holistic cancer coach. Uh, okay. And so I do counsel people one-on-one, -on -one, mostly with just people that are have active cancers. So, um, But I do have some group coachings as well for people that are wanting to um, prevent cancer, so never get it in the first place. That's mm -hmm. the best medicine, right, is to never get it in Prevention. the first place. Prevention, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, then we have, um, and then we have groups that are designed for active cancer if you don't want to do one-on-one -on -one with me. And then we have people that have had cancer but are interested in never getting it again. So preventing or lowering that risk of reoccurrence. Okay. So I, I teach people in all of those aspects. And then of course, there's just a fun cooking show always attached to yes. that. But just getting in that kitchen and understanding that the food that we eat is medicine. It is medicine and it is information that we're feeding our body. So feed that body good information. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here thank and sharing you. some amazing tips. Thank you so much. I'm sure you're anxious to try some of Leslie's yummy recipes, but before you run off to the kitchen, stick around to meet an inspiring woman who's using her voice to advocate for issues she truly believes in. Daphna Michelson Janae is a state representative for the Colorado House of Representatives, and she's here to share a little motivation 
to inspire you to find and use your voice to make an impact. So Daphna, you have definitely been an inspiration for me personally to continue to use my voice. And I wanna make sure that you know we really get an understanding of what you really mean by that and you know how you've been empowering other people to do so. Well, certainly, I first of all, I'm totally touched that, that you feel that I'm an inspiration for you because you totally are an inspiration for so many people. Um, in the past, when you and I have spoken, we've spoken about my journey uh, to all 50 states to find and share the stories of ordinary people solving problems in the community, and the book that I wrote about that, which really focused on what does it take to be a community problem solver. And in my role now as a state representative, just having completed my first legislative session, I found a whole new way that women in particular have an opportunity to use their voice in a way that they might not think about. So um, I'd love to give you a couple of examples of things that have happened this past legislative session. Yeah. So one is um, we often, as women, we don't talk about loss. Um, for example, we don't talk about pregnancy loss, we don't talk about postpartum depression, we don't talk about depression at all. And one woman in, in my community, in the community that I represent, had suffered with very serious postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And she really felt like she wanted to be able to do something, but she didn't know what that was. And while we just learned from Leslie how she created this wonderful thing to grow from her cancer experience to help others not to have cancer in a simply beautiful way, in the same way, this constituent wasn't gonna start a program. She's a librarian, she's an introvert, she's a brand new mom. Um, and so she reached out to her representatives. She reached out to me and she reached out to her state senator and she said, look, you know, as a, as a new mom who went through very serious postpartum depression, there were no resources for me. Yeah. What can you do? Simply by picking up that phone and making that call, by sending an email, we were able to go back and the senator in our area was able to go back and we found some money that we could put towards maternal mental health screenings. Okay. We created a, um, a resolution. We talked about maternal mental health from the well of the House floor and yeah. from the well of the Senate floor. And we made maternal mental health an issue in Colorado that women and their, their partners were talking about because one woman decided, hey, I'm She's going through an experience. Yeah. I've got to use my voice to do something about it. So that's, that's one example. There's yeah. another example. Um, we hear in the news often that um, women who file for sexual assault and go to court often are treated very poorly in the process of that trial. Mm -hmm. um, they're accused, they're given a bad name, and as women who, you know, I myself experienced state rape when I was 14 years old, wow. um, so many of us have have been victims of sexual violence in some way, shape, or form, we're pretty sure that you don't put yourself in that scenario unless you've experienced something yeah. from the aggressor. Um, so she reached out after a recent uh, lawsuit that was you know, watched nationally and probably internationally, came back and once again, the abuser is not going to be charged. Wow. And, and she reached out and she said, you know, we've got to do something, we've got to do something. And so we started exploring what are the laws in Colorado if a woman was going to file for sexual assault? What are the protections we might be able to put in place for yeah. her for her dignity, even for the um, accused dignity? You know, what are the things that we can be doing to make sure that a woman has an opportunity to truly address her aggressor, um, to truly use her voice, and to be treated with the dignity and respect that we would all hope that we would receive from the court? So. Yeah. This woman also was a victim um, and was not about to create a new program or do something like that, but she knew that she could use, raise up her voice yes. and lift up other women with her just by reaching out to her representatives. So wow. I want to encourage, and I, I, I'm grateful to you for this opportunity, but I really want to encourage women who are experiencing some sort of loss, who are experiencing some sort of trauma, who have an idea of how things might be better, who are having concerns within their community, to absolutely lift up your voice, reach out mm -hmm. to your representative, and if they don't respond well to you, find another representative to reach out to. Call yeah. me, it's good. Yeah. It's funny, that's not ever something I would have thought of as a step of what to do. I mean, if anything, the 
biggest step I might take if I felt something is maybe start a petition online and share it on social sure. media. But I wouldn't have thought to go to a state representative and ask someone to speak up for me or do something about it. And it's not even only speaking up. We're going to create a law yeah. that can be put into place that can protect you in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I think those online petitions are wonderful. It's a way to recognize and understand that you're not alone. Yes. Right? So that's step one. Step two is, okay, now I've got all these signatures. Now I know that this is an issue that not only I'm experiencing or not even only that I have recognized. Mm -hmm. So now take it to that next level and let us help you by, by looking at what we might be able to do to make the community a better, stronger place for you to live. Yeah, that's so powerful. Thank you. So is there anything else that we can do to lift up our voices even stronger and be more powerful and um, really speaking up for what is meaningful and important to us? Yes, you can run for office. <laughs> and, yes. Um, you, Crystal <laughs> Covington, and you, beautiful audience, can absolutely run for office. Yes. And guess what? There are all sorts of offices to run for. Yes. And right now, women are entirely underrepresented in elected bodies. Mm -hmm. We have more women in Colorado in the State House than many. We used to have the most, but we don't any longer. We are starting to lose ground. Uh -huh. So I don't care what party you are. I don't care who you affiliate with. You should step up and consider, is there an office that I can run yeah. for? So think about school board. Think about auditor. Think about county commissioner. Think about state house. Think about mm -hmm. state senate. Think about governor. I mean, everybody else is running for governor right now. <laughs> yeah. you know. So there are, there are all sorts of positions that you might consider running yeah. for. And depending on where you live, it could be a really simple task to say, hey, I'm going to throw my name on a ballot. My yeah. dad actually um, went and voted, and he's in Pennsylvania, and there's a particular elected position that he wrote his name in on because there was no name there. Well, he won because nobody else had written their oh, name gosh. on it. So he was an, uh, uh, it was, he was an elections judge. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, you know, sometimes it's a little easy to get elected, um, and sometimes it isn't. But you sometimes know what? It's challenging. That's right. Um, yeah. My election was really, really challenging. Yeah. And who came around me? Other women. So build your community. Reach out to those of us who are in elected office. Let us help you sit next to us on the floor because yeah. that's the best and strongest way for you to raise your voice. And I think one of the biggest things that I have learned about running for office is that the, um, the qualifications are not what people think. Mm -hmm. You think that you know you need to have had you know all this experience in politics. You need to have you know been involved here, here, and there. And yes, sometimes those things are helpful, but you do not you know on paper it does not say you have to have done this for a lot of the positions. Yeah, I had zero um, political experience. I had done yeah. some trainings, but I've never held a political office. Yeah. And actually, I think that that endeared me to people mm -hmm. because I wasn't looked at as a politician. Yeah. So don't, you know, women are really good about saying, oh, I'm not qualified. Yeah. Let's change that messaging a little bit and, and think a second because you know what? Actually, it's my life experiences that I'm bringing to the table right. and you are qualified. Yes. Well, thanks so much Thank for you. sharing that insightful, uh, those insightful examples and you know, really giving us the inspiration to go after sharing our voice and doing something, taking action. Thank you. Thank you for doing this and giving women an opportunity to have their voices heard. Thanks, Daphna. Wow, Daphna just shared some great tips for feeling more empowered to use our voices for good. Now it's time for us to stand up to old patterns and change the game when it comes to dieting. Sherry Medico, AKA the Diet Terminator, is here to talk with us about the psychology of overeating and how we can change our patterns to have the body and life we want. So first of all, I really need to know where you got the name from. The Diet Terminator is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I am uh, a proponent against diets. I, um, what people don't understand is that dieting is the number one people overeat. So what happens when we say we can't have something? We obsess what? about it. <laughs> and the Terminator, well, I'm an Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, so <laughs> that's where yeah. Termina the Terminator car came from. Okay. So um, about getting rid of the diet mentality and moving on to teaching people how to eat healthfully by um, getting to the heart of why they're overeating to begin with. So yeah. what are those patterns that you're what is that reason that you have the knee-jerk reaction to overeat and turn to food to um, you know, we have a whole uh, variety, a category of food called comfort food, right? Com food is very so comforting good. for us. 
and it's very, very easy to turn to food to soothe, to satiate an emotion, to try to um, self-medicate, right? Mm -hmm. We eat for lots of other reasons than being actually physically hungry. So yeah. uh, boredom, stress, loneliness, um, you know, all kinds Need of for things. stimulation with yes. that chocolate. <laughs> chocolate stimulation, stimulate. right? Being tired, um, being sad, all those things um, can create a pattern of overeating. So um, what I help people do is see what those patterns are within them to pay attention to, okay, I'm craving sugar or massive carbohydrate yes. cravings. Um, what is, am I really actually hungry or do I have something else going on? So for me, it started when I, at the age of 12. I was on my first diet by 12 and I was yo-yoing back and forth, overeating, uh, trying to diet, over-exercising in this whole cycle of uh, that was fueled by a negative body image. So, wow, that's um, so early. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. So yeah. it's very common to, at that age, uh, be anywhere between 10 to 14. That's where we, particularly women, but I think it's more and more happening in boys and men as well, where okay. we're looking at the images on TV and on, in magazines. Mm -hmm. um, and one, all the magazine stuff is being airbrushed, right? So we're comparing right, ourselves to, uh, correct, it's uh, comparing ourselves and saying, wow, I don't look like that person. Mm -hmm. If I just um, lost weight, I'd be a good person. So that's another thing women do. Um, we have a tendency to put our entire self-esteem around our body image. Yeah. Um, so if someone says, oh, I'm fat, I must be a bad person. Um, so to really also help women um, improve their self-image and body image and feel good and live in a body that they want to live in and feel good in. Yeah. And I know that, you know, you talked about the psychology of it. I remember going to school and they kind of taught us that we're naturally inclined to eat um, you know, carbo lots more carbohydrates naturally inclined to, if we get access to sugar, try to eat a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a natural thing. And so combating that, I mean, how do you get past something that is kind of a natural occurrence for us right. and start eating more healthily? Um, so uh, the first thing I have people do is just be a fly on your wall and be paying attention to what types of food triggers you may have. Yeah. So think a little bit of background on habits. A habit has... A cycle it's uh, there's a trigger an action and a reward and the more often that habit um, that you follow through with that habit the deeper it gets and the yeah. heart and the harder it is to break from it but you have control of your habits and that's where people I think miss out on yeah. you don't have to keep falling into it so finding your trigger and what the action is and then either try to alleviate the trigger altogether so um, or have a better understanding of your trigger so you can manage the trigger Meaning for me, I was an anxiety eater. Okay? Oh, yeah. So whenever I was anxious, I would come home. From, school made me very anxious. So I'd come home from school and head right to the kitchen and eat all the sugar I could get my hands on. <laughs> okay. It's like a cure, but it also will make you go straight to sleep. <laughs> exactly. So um, what I realized over the many years of yo-yoing was, wow, this has nothing to do with the food, but it has to do with how I am dealing with my emotion, my anxiety, or not dealing with it, right? Basically trying to numb myself out with sugar. So once I uh, created a new pattern of, um, you know, Every time I stepped foot in the kitchen, I would ask myself, Sherry, are you actually hungry? Are you here for a meal? Or are you feeling anxious for some reason? And I would just uh, sit there and evaluate it. Okay, well, no, I'm anxious. And, and at, when I could decide and determine when I was anxious, then I could make a choice, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have to keep going in that direction and turn to the sugar. I had some other go-to things like listening to music and calling a good friend. So I, could, I had some other options yeah, to put in so the action. Yeah, so finding something to basically replace mm -hmm. that junk food craving. Absolutely. Yeah. So when, once we alleviate those uh, those automatic triggers that cause are causing the overeating patterns, mm -hmm. um, we naturally eat when we're physically hungry. Right. Um, we naturally eat the right amount for our bodies and our movement patterns. Um, and the weight simply falls off and we get to a nice, healthy um, body weight and start to feel good in our bodies. Yeah. And um, the dieting sort of, <laughs> the dieting mentality, you don't need that anymore because yeah. you're just eating normal for you. 
Um, and, you know, eating healthfully is not super rocket science, right? Most people know what to do. They just are incapable of doing it because they're stuck in these patterns uh -huh. of that um, the un unhealthy relationship with food patterns. Yeah, so. I can get that. <laughs> I can totally understand that. <laughs> yeah, so is there anything else that you want to offer as far as strategic advice for people or anything else that they can do to kind of transition into that healthier life before we go? Uh, yeah, so... Um, you know, I help people. I'm a, I'm a coach for the yo-yo diet cycle and helping you through those unhealthy eating patterns. Um, I also certify other co diet terminator coaches. I'm also looking for other people who are on my same mission and want to help people overcome their yo-yo eating patterns and develop a healthy relationship with food and themselves. Um, and they can find me at dietterminator.com. Great. Well, thanks so much for those tips. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Wow, what an incredible show. I'm so glad that you were here to meet these inspiring women. I'll see you on the next episode, but always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.